subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. It's the largest Samsung Note phone ever and it's going to have a tall task if it's going to entice people to want to spend the $1,000 to $1,250 to get their hands on this device. After the really good Note 8 just dropped last year, a lot of people purchased that device. This one seems on the surface like it's basically the same phone with just a couple of few changes. But does Samsung do enough here with its signature color yellow S Pen with the S Pen remote and all of that good stuff? Well, I use this phone for about two weeks now, and I have a really in-depth experience to share with you here. So stick around for my Note 9 review. That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Let's kick this review off by talking about the key specifications that actually matter here with the Note 9. 6.4 inch Super AMOLED 2K display. We do have a 12 megapixel dual 4K 60p variable aperture camera that comes over from the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. You can get six or eight gigs of RAM coupled with a Snapdragon 845 or Exynos 9810 octa-core CPU if you're an international phone, 128 gigabytes of storage or 512 gigabytes and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now let's go ahead and talk about the body and the build of this device. Now the Note 9 definitely on first glance, you're gonna think, well, is this a Note 8 all over again? Well, maybe if you look at things like that, but if you actually take a look at the details, you can already see that there's a huge change when it comes to where that fingerprint is placed. And also the Note 9 is a little bit shorter than the Note 8 and a little bit wider. So you gotta look for the details here when we're talking about an upgrade at least from last year's phone in the Note 8. So you can see right here, it's very similar in its thickness. It's also very similar in its width, but I mean, these are slight differences. Again though, the Note 9 just felt a little bit skinnier, but a little bit taller. So a really tall phone in the Note 8 and a slightly shorter phone in the Note 9, making it slightly easier to one hand the Note 9. But you can see the big change is that fingerprint sensor a lot of people complained about actually moved down below here to a more reachable location, you could say. Now, on the back of this device, you do have yourself the signature Gorilla Glass that looks very pretty depending on the color. A lot of people wanted a black one here in the US. They actually made the Note 9 in black. It's just not available here just yet. I'm not sure it will be. SIM card tray, expandable storage up to 512 gigs. And for some reason, there's a Qualcomm 4G sticker there probably trying to show off that they have great modems in here. Chamfered edges make its way to the Galaxy Note 9. And we have that beautiful on the front 6.4 inch display we talked about earlier. It doesn't look that much different in terms of color, accuracy, and all that stuff and than the Note 8. But you can see up at the top, we have our sensors, we have our speaker grill, and our front facing camera up there. That's an eight megapixel sensor. Now at the bottom of the Galaxy Note 9, you're gonna see a little chin with the capacitive home button. So don't think this is your all screen phone. This is not an Oppo Find 10. It's not an iPhone 10 with all the way down, no chin. This has a chin and its side bezels are something that not all, you know, infinity display lovers are gonna like cause we're trying to see a phone that goes all screen and this one kind of doesn't really care to do that even more. It just kind of sticks with what it knows and actually adds a little bit more bezel. So at the bottom, we have our speaker grill, S Pen, USB-C, headphone jack, the usual stuff off to the left, Bixby button and the volume button. Bixby's rather close here to the volume button. So I did accidentally press Bixby button quite a few times on the body of this phone. Power button is off to the right of the device here for the Note 9. Now keep in mind that you do get a signature color yellow S Pen if you buy the ocean blue version and you also get the on-screen memo here from the lock screen. Definitely matches the color of whatever pen you get. If you get the lavender one, it's purple for example. But if you want a more compact body phone, the S9 Plus is still available and the one I would recommend. The Note 9 has some pretty nice design. Although it is rather weighty at over 200 grams compared to prior versions, if you don't like heavier phones, the Note 9 is definitely gonna feel like a bit of weight in your pocket. So keep that in mind. The Note 9 is not the lightest kid on the block, but it does have a much more ergonomically placed fingerprint sensor, making it a little bit easier to reach. Now on the front of this device, you can see that has Gorilla Glass. I did happen to drop this, so this is not Samsung's fault here, but this, this is definitely not invincible. You're going to want to put a screen protector on here if you want to protect that display from getting scratched, although it is pretty good and resistant against keys and little minor stuff. But if you do drop it, put a screen protector on there. Very bright display overall here for this 
this device and you do have the ability to put this up to 2k resolution it comes with full hd out of the box but i find that to just not be as sharp as the wqhd plus option that they have and if you want to get the best out of this display you're going to have to turn that mode on you still have all your traditional samsung modes like basic and you know adaptive color mode photo mode cinema modes they're all there great viewing angles for this panel and whether you're going to be doing things like video watching or you're going to be doing things like reading this is going to be a fantastic display this was also youtube certified so um, that kind of just means that it has really good viewing experience for youtube it doesn't really much look much different from like a galaxy s9 plus or a note 8 so i don't think this is a big deal but having that landscape mode is because when you're able to turn this into different modes like portrait and landscape it makes it more versatile at least for this display size now scrolling and reading you don't have to do that much scrolling here when you're reading because it's such a big display on the note 9 so that's welcome and it's very clear to read as long as you have the 2k mode on you could even see better text in a more sharp way but 1080 is still pretty good out of the box it's a very bright display in most conditions but one thing that's lacking on this phone is the 120 hertz refresh rate that we've seen on things like the razor phone i really would have liked to see that here for the note 9 but it's not here so at the end of the day i'm concluding the display section with it's a note 8 display that's just slightly better calibrated gets a little bit brighter and it looks very similar if not identical identical to the S9's display. So this is a just continuing Samsung streak and making great displays. So here on software, we have 8.1, no Android Pie out of the box, pretty disappointing for this price point, but hey, that's Samsung. They don't always have the latest version of Android, Samsung 9.5 in the software. And if you're used to Samsung software, you're not really gonna, again, see a much big of a difference here. However, I have noticed it's a little bit better optimized than prior versions. So I don't know what they did over there at Samsung, but the last version of, you know, the Samsung Samsung TouchWiz on like the S8 Plus was just a little bit more twitchy. Same with the Note 8. It's a little bit better here for the Note 9 and you could feel it. It just feels smoother in pretty much every action that you do. And a lot of people say, well, just wait six months, seven months till that phone slows down. No, this, this phone's not going to slow down. I've been really hammering it really hard. The Note 8's not really that slow, but it definitely doesn't run as snappy as this one here on the Note 9. So, this one right here with the software is really well optimized. Now you do have a ton of features here in the phone, but the ones you're gonna really notice is the S Pen features. This is the one that's kind of new here in the settings because settings basically looks like your prior Samsung phone if you've been rocking this later software that they have on their phone. But there's a bunch of S Pen settings. We'll talk about that later. And the camera is something noticeable as well. The camera user interface just looks a little bit different than before. It looks more like the S9 Plus's camera experience. So that's a difference as well. But other than that, like I say, this Samsung Experience theme store is the same. If you like the Samsung TouchWiz software, you're going to like this one. It's essentially what you're already used to. So just keep that in mind. This is a refinement year. This is not a revolutionary year for Samsung changing things up. This is just, you know, refining what they already have in store. Now, taking a look at the software when it comes to the S Pen, multitasking is something that the Note 9 definitely excels in as it can do things that other phones just cannot do, having multiple applications open at once. And you could say, well, the S9 Plus can do that. And yes, it can do most of this, but it's very hard to have multiple applications open with just your finger. It gets annoying. The S Pen is very precise at moving these applications around. It acts like a little cursor on your phone. So the S Pen definitely shines when you're gonna be doing things like this, but you gotta think about how often am I really gonna be doing things like this on my phone? If you have a note in the past, you probably are aware of these features and they can come in really good handy when you're trying to do those computer like tasks on your phone now this doesn't happen too often for most folks but when it does happen it is really useful to have it so it's like one of those features that when you have it you have it but when you don't you're like why don't i have this feature now you also have the traditional split screen multitasking that's found on pretty much any android phone now but samsung does have a little bit more customization you can bring the application up a little higher also you have app list that just gives you more apps than most other android devices give you so it's a little bit better in pretty much every way when it comes to multitasking over the competition so this is where the note 9 really shines with its s pen now that must make you think what about performance samsung's touting 8 gigs of ram 512 gigs of storage we have a snapdragon 845 the s9 plus was claimed to be one of the fastest phones ever now we have the note 9 which is supposedly bringing all of that stuff is it faster has it lagged in your use and i could tell you absolutely not i've been trying to get this thing to lag just trying really hard opening as many applications as i can and i cannot find lag 
for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now, a lot of haters, a lot of people that don't really like Samsung are going to come in the comments section, disrespect the comment section, and just say a bunch of lies when they don't even use this phone and say that it's going to lag. Do not buy it. Those lies. I'll let you know in a future video of my months later if this phone has lagged. But so far, nothing on the Note 9, even when you're pushing it to the max. So it's a go when it comes to performance. Now here in the storage, we have 512 gigs on this model. TouchWiz did take up quite a bit of storage, like 40 something gigs. So out of the box, you really get like 460 gigs of storage, but that's definitely enough for most people. And it's pretty fast SSD storage as well for this device. So like I say, this thing has the RAM that you'll need. And I don't think you're gonna be pushing it more than you know six gigs. So if you get the six gig model, you're gonna be fine with that Note 9 as well. Just think about the storage because I think that's where you see a true upgrade is how much you can store on this phone. Now, the S Pen is a Bluetooth remote. You can click this button. You can see you have a nice little tip at the end and it does have a signature blue top where you can click it just like before that really doesn't serve no purpose but to you know satisfy your little you know clicking but you can see right here that we have the lavender pen in comparison to the note 8 pen you could see it looks basically exactly the same it might be slightly longer maybe just very slightly under a microscope but you're not going to notice much of a difference the s pen is almost identical to the one on the note 9 or the note 8 just a different color here for the note 9 in terms of the software you're looking at basically everything you had on the note 8 but we do add the s pen remote features here which allows you to use the camera to take pictures use a selfie camera i think that's going to be the most important one you do have to charge this in the slot it takes like 10 minutes it's take too long but it only last 30 minutes but i don't think you guys are going to be using this s pen remote for more than 30 minutes you also have other applications that will work with this you can skip music tracks stuff like that and third-party developers can develop apps if they want i don't think many are going to but they can you can see the camera is one of the most useful ones you can double click it to go to the selfie and you could easily take selfies this is really useful if you're a solo person and you don't really have anybody to take that picture that s pen can really help you out you no longer will need a tripod put a timer up you can just set your phone down use your s pen also the s pen is not only good at that bluetooth remote stuff it's also good at writing it's a very precise experience and every new note phone you get at first it feels a lot more smooth than when the tip has been used for a while it starts to get a little bit more rough so change the tips out after about a year if you want it to remain smooth but overall it's a very precise writing experience and i think you're going to enjoy this aspect if you are going to be using it same pressure levels basically as the note 8 and you have the pen up community here which allows you to do live drawings colorings and you could share your artwork with this community this is a, actually a pretty thriving community right here of artists and people that are using this s pen so check it out if you're into that you do have smart select you can view all your notes create your notes and basically the same s pen wheel that we're used to from before so the s pen is a nice addition to this phone and basically one of the main reasons that you're going to buy the note 9 as it's you know advertised right there on the box so s pen upgrades are pretty solid here they're actually quite useful for the note 9 now moving on to security you have intelligent scan which is new here brought over again from the s9 and that allows you to combine the iris scanning with the face scanning to make it more accurate let's take a little sample of this and you could see that it's pretty fast and responsive you don't really have to swipe it'll just recognize you once you unlock the display so i think overall a lot of people will appreciate intelligent scan just makes it slightly more accurate than just you know simply having a face recognition or an iris scanning so that makes it feel again a little bit more refined then you have the fingerprint scanner which is also rather quick here for the note 9 so biometric security is on point for the note 9 i think it's not as great as face id when it comes to authenticating for applications but still you do have quite a bit of security options including the secure folder here which is going to allow you to protect your data and store your own personal stuff on your phone in case anybody gets into your phone they're not going to be able to get into your secure folder so getting on to battery life one of the most important aspects aspects of the Galaxy Note 9 is its battery life. And let me tell you, at first, I thought it wasn't gonna be that great because it wasn't performing as well as I expected. But after it settled in, I started getting really good battery life on this phone and more like what I was expecting. Now, the first 10% always drops off fast on a Samsung. That remains the same here. So don't be fooled by that. Once you get under 90 though, it just starts lasting and lasting. Four hours and 45 minutes on screen time. You can see I had 51% left in that case. Six hours and 32 minutes 
minutes on screen time, 30% left in that case. So if you're really light on this phone, you could definitely push it over seven, maybe even over eight hours if you're really light on screen time. And that's quite a bit of it. Now, standby time is a little bit lower than I would like. You still lose about five to eight percent overnight. So, you know, if that bothers you, charge up in the morning before you head out for your day because you're definitely going to have. 8% loss, 5 to 8% loss in standby overnight. So overall, I think the Note 9 definitely offers one of the best battery lives you can get on any Android phone. I think the Huawei P20 Pro is hanging neck and neck with it as well as the Mate 10 Pro. And any Huawei phone that comes in the future with 4,000 milliamp is going to hang with this phone. But you can see for a Samsung phone, wireless charging, it does have fast charging. It's an endurance champ here for the Note 9. And I think you're going to really appreciate what Samsung gives you here in battery life in comparison to most of their other offerings for Samsung's latest device. Okay, so let's get on to the camera. It's easy to dismiss this camera as well. It's just another Galaxy S9 Plus camera, but we got to take a look at the fact that, yes, while it does bring that basically that same camera, all the features, slow-mo, hyperlapse, promo, live focus, panorama, the software changes to that software, which is a nice update if you're using prior Note phones, and you didn't get 4K 60 frames per second in the Galaxy Note 8. So I think it should have been there, but it wasn't. Now, when it comes to the settings, as I've said in prior Samsung videos, you're going to find things for days. Pro users are really going to appreciate that you have high efficiency video and UHD 60, although it's capped at like five or 10 minutes. So you can't really record on and on with that 4K 60. But most of the time, if you're just shooting shots, you won't need more than five minutes. But like I'm saying, this camera right here, it's just loaded with the stuff. It has the variable aperture camera for the nighttime and low light. It really brightens up a scene. Even if it's really dark, you're still going to get that photo. It has that super speed focus, dual pixel focus. So when you are taking photos, it's just going to focus on things super quickly, which is very useful if you're in something moving like a moving car or if you're just trying to catch something really quickly. That dual pixel AF is really going to come in handy. Most Samsung phones do feature this, so this is not a huge upgrade, but we are talking about the Note 9 and what it does offer. Offer, and I found the camera experience to be just absolutely great for the Note 9. Now, if you don't like Samsung cameras on the front, you're probably not going to like the Note 9s. It doesn't really improve that much over the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. It still has a little bit of a softer looking image on the day to day, but I, I still think it's better than, you know, some cheaper phones. It's definitely better than most mid range phones. So, you know, you got one plus six who has a pretty nice camera, but the note nines is competitive. Let's just put it that way. It's not blowing other phones away on the front selfie cam, but it is competitive. And that's really what you need to be when you're trying to be the king in pretty much every other area. Now let's take a look at some of the samples I shot. You can judge for yourself. Now, discussing the audio, I'm not going to play an audio track through this video because it doesn't really produce the actual sound that you're going to hear in real life. But I can discuss that Dolby Atmos is on here and it's not on by default, which I think it just should be on there by default. You should just call it maybe a Dolby Atmos feature instead of, you know, turning it on and off because when you don't have Dolby Atmos on, these speakers don't sound that loud. So you really want that on. You do have the front top speaker and the bottom speaker. So it doesn't have both front firing speakers, so you still can cover that bottom one and make the sound worse. 
But overall, when you place it on a table, it gets really loud. I think that when it's not placed on a table, it doesn't create that resonance. So it's not super, super loud, but it's still much better at the directional audio coming from that top speaker and not covering it up and distorting it like on the Note 8. So it's a huge upgrade in that regard. Bluetooth 5.0 is also on board. This is actually a really big improvement. People don't really think about this, but Bluetooth connection speeds are ridiculously fast now. That's something that was a little bit slower before. And Samsung does offer Samsung Dex here. You don't have to use this big old little Dex pad that you had before. Now you can get this, this one little wire that goes HDMI to your monitor, and you could turn this into the desktop experience from the Note 9. So it's not, you know, the full experience of a desktop, but it's still pretty nice to have that Windows style of operating system. Now pricing, 128 gigabyte for a $1,000 model, 512 gigabytes is going to be $1,250. Now, 256 gig, where is it at? It's not available because Samsung decided to skip that one out. And to me, this is kind of a money move because if you got a 256 gig model, that's going to be the option most people are going to buy as it's right in between the priciest model and the cheapest model. But you can trade in your device to get this price to go down a bit on these devices. So most people don't actually have to pay over $1,000 for this phone. If you are considering doing a trade and you can get this thing at easily under $1,000. Also, I've seen it already on eBay Swappa for under $1,000. So you don't have to buy it at a retailer and pay this full price. You can actually get it now cheaper elsewhere. But most people will not have to pay over a thousand. But this is the prices if you're going to buy it at the full retail prices. And basically, I think it's just kind of a move to compete with Apple. Seemingly, you know, when you have a higher price phone, sometimes people associate that with the best on the market. But there's a lot of phones that are like five hundred dollars, one plus six. I'm talking about that can compete easily with this phone in most regards, except for its S Pen. So these are the prices for the Note Nine. And the phone call quality was fantastic. External speakers make them calls louder. In conclusion, the Note Nine is a refined Note 8 with S9 Plus features brought over like the variable aperture camera, for example, there. So the Note 9 to pretty much everybody on the internet is quote unquote, the best smartphone money can buy. And that might be the case for some, but best is very subjective and not everybody considers the bulkiest phone, the biggest phone to be the best. Some people like a small one hand phone. Some people like a phone that doesn't have a stylus because they rather write on paper. So I think this is the best Samsung phone for anybody who wants the best of Samsung. And that's my conclusion. If you guys found this video helpful, enjoy.